this uh, i'm getting goosebumps uh, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce to you dr manasvi who has uh, scored rank 10 in the recently concluded initiate exam she is from uh, KEM Mumbai, and uh, I am uh, Dr. Marva, your medicine faculty from Praplander. Uh, I'll ask you a very cliche question, doctor. How are you feeling? I am feeling on the top of the world. It feels like this is a dream. So I had to just recheck a few times to see whether this is actually a true news. Okay, so did you pinch yourself? <laughs> yes, I definitely pinched myself. <laughs> Okay, okay. Great, Doctor. So it has been a, a very, uh, I would say, uh, tedious and a uh, lot of hard work that was required while you were studying from prep ladder. So I would like uh, some bites from you about one, how many corrects did you get in this exam? Approximately, what do you think is the number of corrects that you get? And uh, second would be that how did prep ladder contribute to your growth? Thank you for this question, sir. I think I got approximately 160 plus minus 5 corrects in this exam. I did not calculate because there were a few controversies here and there. And regarding prep ladder, prep ladder has been a huge part of my journey. So for medicine, I referred to your lectures like you make the most difficult concept seem very digestible, very easy. Like from your ECG class to murmurs class, respiratory room at Every system you made in a such concise way that we found it very easy to answer almost all questions in the exam. So that was a great contribution to my uh, medicine preparation. Also other faculties like Preeti ma'am, her micro and patho videos, the images, the short mnemonics. And she was so sure that questions will come from this. And they actually did. Like even... From the revision videos, we could cover almost a lot of questions. And the main notes, obviously, they were, you know, they had it all. So it was really a great time studying from Prep Ladder. So uh, in which year did you take Prep Ladder subscription? In the second year. Oh, great. great. So uh, like which subjects did you start from? Especially like uh, uh, my main query would be, I mean, obviously, you started very early. That's true. But like specifically for any set, but the top view decided ki I'm gonna give a shot at it and like uh, mainly any set focused question. I mean, when did you decide that you're gonna focus on any set? And then how did what what resources in prep ladder app were you using? Uh, ranging from QBank to the main video for the LLR component. I mean, uh, uh, if we could just provide a brief overview to the future aspirants, that would really be helping them in their future journey. Yes, sir. Sure. I was sure about INICT from almost six months. So I started in that direction since six months. So from prep ladder, I had uh, almost watched all the videos, but a few videos like PSM and all were remaining. So I had watched them in the last go and it was a volatile subject. So Neha ma'am had really made it easy to revise it quickly. So, and uh, so after the videos, I used to solve the question bank. The custom module feature is a very good feature in prep ladder. And also one thing that I used a lot was grand test. So in the last few months, prep ladder started giving the INI set pattern grand test. So I gave the live test almost every live test I had given. So it just helped me gauge my performance. And also from the mistakes, I could know which topics to focus on more for INI CT. Okay. So like when you were using the custom modules, like what were the filters that you were using? Uh, mostly the previous year question filter I used to use and sometimes numbers or problems because INICT focuses on that usually. So okay. that were the features that I had used. Okay. So how would you rate the actual exam versus the prep ladder mock test that was conducted? I mean, similar or like in as brief as possible. I mean, how would you rate the actual exam versus uh, when you gave the mock test? Yes, it was quite similar to the prep ladder grand test. In the prep ladder grant test, which I gave recently, like it was all India grant test. So there were a lot of questions which were assertion reason, match the following or, you know, choose the best option from four, like multiple correct choice. So that was very much a part of the exam. A lot of questions were based on that. Also, I had seen the lectures, PYQ discussion lectures or important INICT topics lectures, LRR lectures, which were on the app and on YouTube from you, Preeti ma'am, Neha ma'am. So that was a great help because hearing how the faculty solves the question helps us in knowing what 
wrong can go in our own thought process. So it was a very good guidance for me. So like when you attempted these questions uh, in the mock test, uh, there would be many of them that you would have got wrong as well. So, I mean, uh, did you take it to the heart? My, my, my question is like, you know, when I get, when I talk, when I take a live class, when I'm talking to students, they tell me that other lines say, you know, five questions go wrong or like three, four questions go wrong. They get disheartened. So I, this, would, this is a normal human reaction. And, uh, uh, this would happen to everybody, including I have myself suffered from it when I used to study, you know, and questions used to go wrong. I used to feel disappointed. So how did you emotionally adjust to this fact that if questions go wrong, one is bound to feel disappointed. But then how did you actually come out of it? And uh, you said, okay, I'm going to persist. So one thing while preparing is you should try to keep emotions aside from, you know, your preparation. So while giving grand tests and reviewing, you see your mistakes. Like if you have done 50 mistakes or 60 mistakes, you should go to the question and classify your mistake. Whether this is based on some lack in my knowledge or analysis, or is it a silly mistake? Or is the question out of the box? So if the question is out of the box, then you don't need to worry because questions are going to be out of the box. But if there is something that you have read a few, uh, like quite a number of times, it is there in your notes or lectures, then you should be careful. You should write it down. If you have analyzed it in the wrong way, you should definitely go back to the video, look at the video, see what the faculty has to say on that topic. And then you can see that question. And silly mistakes, obviously, you should feel bad if you make a silly mistake because that takes your rank down. So you can feel bad for the silly mistake. But other types of mistakes, you should be careful, analyze. You can make a chart and see and try to reduce silly mistakes as much as possible. The factual questions are going to be there. So you should not bother yourself. You should know the fact in one line, write in a book and leave it. Recently, Preplatter had lost a new QBank. Did you use that? And what features were the ones that you liked or disliked about them? Our honest opinion. I just solved a few modules because uh, whatever existing features were there, that was, you know, the image-based pattern was good in the new QBank. So mm -hmm. I definitely solved those questions. But otherwise, I didn't want to change the source in the last moment because. Uh, then it gives you some undue pressure. Visual memory, we tend to lose out of all the yeah. content that we've already done. So agreed, agreed. So uh, like you said, I, I would say golden words, you know, that one should not get, like we do not get attached to our patients. We just methodically keep on analyzing them, treating them. We should not get emotionally attached to the questions as well. If they go right, we should not feel super elated. And if they go wrong, we should not feel super bad. Uh, I think this is an important message to all of you who would be preparing for need PG now in case the results for this one have not been good. Uh, I said that even in my yesterday's live session as well, do not be emotionally attached to questions. Let bygones be bygones and try to focus. And I'm very sure, doctor, your inbox is going to be full with so many requests from your juniors and so many people across on social media that uh, Didi, ma'am, please let us know your strategies. So I want you to uh, give them a few bites about how to effectively use prep ladder. I mean, when should they start using prep ladder? That is one. And like, how should they be, uh, you know, uh, planning to go about doing the subjects? Which subject to be done first? Which subject to be done later? Uh, which subject is the most volatile and should be done in the end? I mean, whatever are your bites, I would not like to give too many uh, directions. But yeah, I mean, that's these are like uh, these are queries which are which are in my inbox as well. Uh, that's uh, sir. Can you ask, ma'am, regarding uh, or the current offers regarding how how have they used the resource? So I think these would be golden words from you. Uh, so first, before approaching a subject, if you are earlier in your preparation, you can use prep ladder. There is uh, no harm because uh, I think it is a great baseline to read your standard test books. So in the first second year, if you are starting, second year should be ideal. Third year is also okay. And nobody has to get disheartened if they have not used it till now when they are in the final prof internship. It's okay. You can start from anywhere you are. So first you can go, those who are in their initial years, they should first watch a lecture. Make notes if possible. Otherwise, prep ladder has beautiful notes. So you can always buy the printed notes or see in the app the notes. So it will be a great help. After that, you should go to the test book, at least for the most important topics. The topics which are in the pro, uh, exams, MBBS final exams, they are the important topics for need. So it is not a different thing altogether. So you, sh you can go back to the test book, read it. If you're in first year, second year, you should definitely do that because it gives you a good insight. In INICT, the questions require some uh, knowledge 
overall knowledge for which you can guess properly if you know it. But if they are in the final year and internship, they don't have to worry. They can look at the videos, read the notes, solve the QBank. Solving is the most important part. Because by solving, you will know how a question can be asked, which topic is important and how to rule out options if you don't know the question stem. So PrepLadder has a lot of clinical questions. So, and the explanation helps you understand what buzzword you have to pick up to get to the answer. So solving the question bank is a great help. And towards the end of the journey, in final year internship, you should start giving grand test. You should not feel like I have done only 10 subjects or 12 subjects. Should I start giving a grand test? I would not know what the other subjects are. But still, you can start giving the grand test, seeing 200 questions at a time. And now Repladder has incorporated the new patterns for INICT. So seeing it in slots of 50-50, a mixed bag of questions will give them a different insight altogether. Solving, uh, like topic-wise, you know, like if it is a migraine ka module, you know that the answer is going to be migraine. <laughs> it won't be cluster headache, tension headache, most likely. Yeah, so, yeah. Solving in a mixed bag, solving subject-wise test, that will help you grow in the long run. Obviously, solving it module-wise initially is going to help, but those who are in final year and, you know, internship should go for custom module, should go for subject-wise test, should go for grand test. That will be more effective rather than solving it topic wise. If you are making a lot of mistakes in one topic, you can definitely go to that module, solve all the questions in the module. You would know the topic in and out. But otherwise, if you're confident with a particular topic, you can skip that topic, but you should go to the custom module and grant test. That is going to create a greater impact. That is. Okay. So Dr. The uh, next message that popped up on my screen was asked ma'am regarding how many times did she go through prep ladder rapid revision? So prep ladder rapid revision is a great resource. So like in patho, micro, PSM, these subjects are big subjects. So even medicine, it is a huge subject. If you are starting late, then you might be overwhelmed. But trust me, if you go to the revision videos properly, it will help you clear almost, you know, as much as questions that you can get a good rank. So you should not have any FOMO that you are not doing the main videos. So doing the revision videos thoroughly, line to line. But if you're doing revision videos, you can't be like, I know only 10%, 30% of it. Then you have to know every line. You can just rewatch the video again and again if you're not able to remember and somehow remember everything from the revision video. It will help you a lot you will see that almost everything is answerable from the revision videos and if you back up with the question bank it will be a great tool or lrr ka feedback wo to bahut hi mast tha jab exam postpone hote the hum baithte the matlab youtube laga ke bas binge watch karo sab professors ka lecture dekho sab matlab that's what i did when the first time exam got postponed, I just opened my tab. I was just watching all your videos, all your questions, taking screenshot, for tough part, writing in my book, whatever I was not knowing. So, and in the end, it was the most affecting thing to do. Because it is like It is like somebody is holding your hand and guiding you through like the most volatile and most important topics. So that was a great thing. So, uh, what would be your message for uh, those students who would be now sitting for NEET PG? Uh, how should they go about for this one month? But the all out mental aggression wala jo phase hai, I mean, I would like you to guide them. Since you have already been through that, uh, you already have walked through that ring of fire. So, you know what goes through the mind of a student right before one month before the exam. And a lot of your colleagues or your juniors or, you know, fellow students would be now sitting for this. So please guide them through this ring of fire. So like there are almost 29 to 28 days left for the exam. So you should have a plan where you give at least two days for a major subject, one day for a short subject or intermediate subject. And then go through whatever notes you are. You have to trust it. And you have to think to yourself that paper is not going to be done from this. It can't be done from this. And read it diligently you would have marked highlighted focus on those points solve the previous year questions you should not go wrong if these if question comes from these two things 
and which will most likely come from this. So it is not about the other questions which are not going to come from your resource. Like in INICT also, there were a lot of crazy questions. A lot of questions where you had to choose and they were slightly tricky. But that doesn't determine your rank. That doesn't determine who the topper is. That do doesn't determine everything. Like, so you have to trust whatever you're doing, the revision videos, the PYQ discussions, whichever you will be watching. And the GTs, last a few GTs you would give. And whatever you have written in your books, like the treasures which you have highlighted, you have to trust these things. Read them carefully. That is not going to determine anything. Okay, you are going to start from zero and you can reach like the best. The sky is the limit for you. So don't look at your colleagues. Don't look at your peers, whatever they are doing. You have everything that is going to come in your hands right now. Trust it and it will be great. So be positive and that's what I would like to say. I understand. I understand. These boys and girls are having a torrid time at the moment, uh, especially after the result, in case they did not go their way. So uh, it will take a while for the result to sink in, but uh, they'll, they'll come, come out of it, I'm very, very sure. So a quick uh, rapid fire, uh, last state strategy uh, as concise as possible. So I had a, la for last day, I had a book where I had written all my GT mistakes mm -hmm. and a few tables, classifications, which I used to forget a lot in my, you know, uh, preparation. So that was what I revised. And I had a few previous year questions bookmark. That was what I re revised. So that should be it. You should not take the pressure of revising everything on the last day because it doesn't happen and it doesn't matter also. So you should have a few quick points which you should know and it goes a long way that is just to build some confidence so what are the future plans now uh, <laughs> yes definitely. and uh, let's see now mostly okay. i would want to take radiology okay great 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 uh, any last words I would just like to thank my parents and my friends who just, you know, lifted my spirits up in these difficult times. And uh, it has been a great journey. So thank you so much for trusting me. Yeah, sure, Doctor. You've been a part of the Platter family. We are really happy to be a part of your success. As I said right in the beginning, when you get great scores, I get goosebumps. It's like every six months I get goosebumps. So <laughs> it's like I'm just tired for a result every six months. I get I go through both the emotions. I go through that happiness part and I go through the sadness part because I get both kind of messages. So I have to go through this every six months. But then uh, that's uh, my objective would be to keep on guiding. I mean, that's what Replatter is for, a proper guidance system that helps you achieve your goals. We give you laser focused approach and that is what we, we we hope that we continue doing in future so thank you doctor for your kind uh, time and the golden words that you have come out with and god bless you my uh, heartiest congratulations to you once again for a great great success and i i wish you a great journey ahead thank you so much sir it was great talking to you you are my inspiration and i really love your lectures i love this interview also thank you so much for being a guidance in this long journey thank you so much thank you thank you thank you god bless you thank you so much